Uh, in our previous lesson, we started introducing this topic, whereby we started by discussing the terms associated with linear motions. That is, we discussed speed as the distance of a time taken by body. Then we went to velocity, whereby we said velocity is a factor quantity, which is the speed in a specified directions. Then we went further to, 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 do, to define the displacement, which we said displacement, just like factor, uh, velocity, is a factor quantity, which is defined as a distance in a specified directions. That's the velocity. Then the last term that we discussed is acceleration, which we said accelerations is the rate of change of velocity with time. The rate of change of velocity with time, and I think that's why we stopped. And to, we can now take up an example in forfing accelerations. So, let's take one example. Example one. That says, the velocity of a body uh, increases from 72 kilometers per hour to, to 144 kilometers per hour in 10 seconds. The velocity of a body increases from 72 kilometers per hour to 144 kilometers per hour and this change in velocity took 10 seconds. Calculate its accelerations. So what is the accelerations? So as I said from the definition of accelerations, that acceleration is actually change of velocity with time. So writing that in formula we can write accelerations is equals to change in velocity. That means you must consider the final velocity which we said in our previous discussions that final velocity uh, use we use um, let me first of all use the, the the word equations final velocity minus initial velocity we define that change by the time taken but in face instead of now writing the word equals like that once we said we normally use acceleration we, know, we normally use symbol a then we have the final velocity which we say you do use V, these are conventional symbols. Anybody who does that physics understand what we are talking about here. Final velocity is actually V minus initial is U divided by T. T is time taken. Those are the conventional symbols for, for, this, for this, uh, these ones. So uh, it's good in physics now to write what you have. We have the initial acceleration, the initial velocity, which is U is actually 72 kilometers per lower and this change to 144 kilometers per hour and what time did it take for this velocity to change it only took uh, 10 seconds so um, those are the units this we have the initial velocity we have the final velocity and then we have the time so what we require to do is not calculate the acceleration so as i said that uh, we normally work with SI units. So we cannot now work with kilometers per hour. So we must, the first thing that we do is to change the velocities into meters per second. Whereby I said this is 72 kilometers per hour. So which we said we must change into meters per second. And I said we do that by my multiplying by 5 over 18. So 72, 72 kilometers per hour we multiply by 5 over 18. This one we are doing to change it into meters per second. So this gives us by 18, 1 by 18. Um, it is going to be all by 9, 2, by 9, 8, by 2, 1, by 2, 4. This giving us 20 meters per second. 20 meters per, per second. So this one now gives us 20 meters per second. We have converted that one into meters per second, sorry. Then we have this other one, 174, 144. We still do the same. And now that this is actually double this, we can automatically see it's gonna, it's gonna be 40 meters per second because 144 is actually a double of 72. So, but we can still do that once to have 144 kilometers per hour. We multiply that by the fraction that we said must multiply all these various values to convert them into meters per second. So we multiply by 5 over 18, just like what we have done the first, the first, the first ones. So we can say here by, by, 
by 2, we can divide by 2, we get 9 by 2, 72, by 9, 1 by 9, 8. So as you see, we get 40 meters per second. So now we have the initial velocity, we have the final velocity, the right units, and we have the time. We don't have to convert time because the SI unit for time is seconds. So now what we need to do is substitute those values in our equations. So we have accelerations is V, final velocity, which is 40 meters per second. Then you have the initial velocity, which is 20 meters per second. And the time it took for that velocity to change is 10 seconds, so we divide by 10. Uh, 40 minus 20 is 20 meters per second. Divide by 10, we see we get this 2 meters per second squared. So we said the unit for measuring accelerations is meters per second squared. Because velocity itself is meters per second, then we are dividing by second again. So it becomes meters per second squared. So we see this is a body that is increasing in velocity. 2 meters per second increasing. But as I said, that in case we get a negative value, what does that show? It shows that this body is decelerating, what we call retardations or decelerations. So that's how we work out a problem in forfeiting accelerations. That first, we must confirm that we're working with the right units, that's meters per second. Then we write, the, we write what we have first, confirm the units. Then from there, we write our equations. That acceleration is V minus U divided by time, where V is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity divided by time taken for that to change. Then from there, now we blow it up, we write the answer there, underline it. Uh, next, we are going now to go to uh, the, the graphs of linear motions. We need to know how to sketch some graphs associated with linear motions. So, uh, what we call the motion graph. So, motion graph. There are various graphs that we can we, we can draw that involves now linear motions, and we are going to start with the first ones. The first one that is the distance, the distance time graph. So for me, I'm just going to sketch some, to show you how we can actually sketch some graphs of these linear motions. And the first one, as I've said, is the distance time graph. And the distance, the first one takes the y-axis. So we have the distance time graph. So we have the distance is on the y-axis. And then we must label our axis. So the distance is in meters. Then we have now, on the x-axis, we have time. And then we must write the units in the brackets. So the distance time graph is in that shape. The distance on the y-axis, we have time on the x-axis. Then from there now, we can have now various, uh, various graphs depending with the, with the state of the body. So the first ones, suppose we are drawing the graph of a body that is in that's not moving that's stationary. How would it look like? So, a body that is stationary, like my duster here, the time is moving, the time is progressing, but the distance is not moving. So, for that once, we would show it with a straight line. So, this is a graph of a stationary, of a stationary body. And from this, you can see that the line increases on the x-axis, but on the y-axis there is no increase or decrease. That shows that the body is stationary. Time moves, but the distance on the y-axis, we see there is no change. So that is the graph of a stationary body. The other one is, that's Roman one, uh, still a distance time graph. We draw two axes like that on a Cartesian plane. Here we have the distance in meters, and here we have time in seconds that one must always be shown and then suppose it is like that how does it show let's try to analyze it that if i demarcate this curve like that suppose this is 10 this is 2 this is 4 this is 20 we can see that there is the, the, this equal change in time with the distance that as the distance move from 0 to 20 
the time has changed from now 0 to 2 seconds. At the same interval is also here, from 10 meters to 20 meters and from 2 to 4. As the distance increases, there's equal change of distance with time. So we say that such a graph is a body moving with constant speed. Constant, uh, constant speed. Because why do I say speed? Because here we have the distance. So from this graph itself, the gradient would give us the speed. So suppose I draw a, a triangle there. On what I have on the y-axis, what I have on the y-axis is the distance. And what I have, the change in x-axis, give me time. Meaning that when I get the gradient to such a curve, it's going to be uniform. So this is a body moving with I think I would have used the word uniform, is a body moving with uniform uniform speed throughout. The rate of change of the distance with time is, is the same. It's, const it's uniform. Uh, that's another one there. Uh, the other one um, is the third one. We can have um, a distance here. And here we have time in seconds. But in this case, uh, the rate of change of distance with times is, is varying. It's not constant. So how would you show that one? It can be like that. That's the first scenario. Or it can be like this. See, this is distance and this is time in seconds. So in this, both of these cases, we see that the rate of change of distance with time is varying. So the speed is varying. But here we see that it is increasing. It's varying, yes, but increasing. It's non-uniform. Then this one here is varying, yes, but almost decreasing. Because we see from here, it's almost becoming flat. The gradient is becoming less or less steep. So it's both of them, yes, we are saying, is varying speed. But look, look at it further, we can see that this is a body that's moving at a varying speed but increasing. The rate of change of distance with time is not the same as we actually show in the second in, a, in our second diagram there. Here the rate of change of distance with time is the same. If I can have another one here, it can have um, 30 and we can still guess now the time it will be. It's going to be uh, 6 because the rate of change of distance with time is the same. But for this ones, the rate of change of distance with time is not the same. That's why I'm saying it's move as a body moving with firing speed but increasing as opposed to this one. Firing yes but decreasing. So those are some of uh, distance time graphs. Uh, there we can go to the other ones. Uh, that is the, the speed time graph. The speed time graph. Just like for the distance time graph, when we're also sketching the speed time graph, the speed, it must be on the y-axis, and the speed, we must label our axis very clearly. When we're drawing in a graph, it's good to label our axis. So we have, on the y-axis, we have the speed here in meters per seconds, and then we have time here in seconds. That is the graphing of the speed time graph. Then, um, we can have uh, now various scenarios. Speed, we have time. Suppose this was I do like this. How's that it show? We have the speed here in meters per second. Here we have time. Suppose this is 20 meters per second. How can we translate from this graph? that this is a body moving with the same speed. It's a body moving with the same speed throughout. 20 meters per second throughout. Time is moving, but there's, there's no change. There's no change in speed. So it's a body moving with the same speed. Um, the other one that we can actually draw out of this, we can have uh, a speed, we can have time here, and as usual, we must show the units. But in this case now, we draw a straight line like that. What can we translate from this speed time graph? 
Looking at it from here, we can see at this point here, it is zero, 00, showing that at time 0, when the body was at rest, the speed was 0. Maybe at 2 seconds, the speed was, let's say, maybe 10 meters per second. At 4 seconds, the speed is, let's say, maybe uh, 40 meters per second. So we can say this is a body that there's increase in speed. And this increase in speed, it is uniform. So this, this is a body that's moving. This increase of speed is increasing with time and uniformly. This uniform increase, increase in speed. This uniform increase in speed. So again, that is now the speed time graphs. Speed on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. But then um, we can show various uh, types of graph depending on how the body is. Very quickly now we can look we can look how we can sketch uh, the the other one that is the distance the third one now the distance the distance time the distance time graph sorry that not the distance but the displacement the displacement we said in physics the word displacement does not mean distance because I say in the on, in ordinary day, day, day life, we normally, mean, we normally use, use them to mean the same. But to say displacement is a factor quantity. Both of them are measured in meters, but distance, we say it from the definitions, is the total length of the part taken by a body. But for the displacement, we say it is a speed, speed in a specific direction, meaning must give the magnitude in the direction. So, uh, that's a difference, just reminding you. So again, for the, uh, for the displacement, we have the displacement here in meters per second. And then here we have, um, we have time in seconds. But the first graph here, for a stationary body, for the displacement, we must show or above the the, the axis and below because why is that because this displacement being a factor quantity it can be both past positive or negative depending with the position of the observer so we must show it above or below because displacement a factor quantity it can be positive or negative because of the positions of the observer for now we are going to stop there and right after the break we are going to look at other motion graphs and for any comments, questions or opinion, please SMS 